Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. You may notice that I'm in a slightly different filming setup today. I'm back filming in my living room. That's because my library room where all my books are is currently the storage room for both boxes that I've packed and boxes that I have to pack in preparation for my move next month. So it's a little bit crowded in there and a little bit cluttered and not very convenient for filming. So I'm relocating. I have already pre-filmed some videos <laughs> still in my previous filming location. So if I'm switching between filming locations in upcoming videos, that is why. Today I have for you my August TBR video. I'm quite excited today because I've finally <laughs> given in to the trend and I've come up with a TBR game. So mine is going to be based on the game Cluedo or Clue if you live in the state, which was one of my favourite games to play as a kid. I mean it's fairly loose, I'll explain it properly in a minute. I will just say that I came up with the idea with the help of a friend and we plotted out how it was going to work and then I did a little search on YouTube and found that a couple of other people have also got TBR games based on Cluedo. So my idea is very different to theirs. It's similar in some ways because it's based on the same game. So my idea is not entirely unique but I came up with it without reference to theirs but I will just mention theirs so you can go and check them out as well and I will link their videos in the comments so there's Ella's Novellas who has a game called TBR Suspect and then there is Simone from Simone XO and Co I'm assuming that's how you say her channel name so she has TBR Clue both their interpretations are very different to what mine is but as I say, I will link their videos so you can go and check them out as well and compare our ideas. So my game is quite straightforward really because I'm not a complicated person. I like to keep things simple, but I wanted to do something to make TBR is a bit more interesting for myself and for you guys watching. What I've done is for every card that appears in the game Cluedo, I've come up with a prompt and each month I will pick five cards and I will have to read a book based on that prompt. There are different types of cards in Cluedo. The aim of the game is to try and figure out who has murdered someone. So you have six characters, six weapons and nine locations and you've got to try and work out which ones are in the murder card envelope which is in the middle of the board and you move around the board. So to keep my game really simple I'm just using the cards, I'm not using the board or the dice or anything like that. Each month I'm going to pick cards at random. Now for this first month I have pre-drawn the cards just because I wanted to see logistically if it was going to work. So I'm going to quickly go through what all the prompts are for you and then I'm going to explain how it works. So the weapons cards are all based on genres. We've got the spanner which is sci-fi, the dagger which is fantasy because it kind of looks a bit like a sword, the rope for classics, the revolver for thriller or mystery, the lead piping for contemporary and then the candlestick for historical fiction. So those are loosely linked to what type of weapon it is loosely. The people cards are a little bit more random although they're kind of like a little bit linked. So first we have Mrs White and my friend and I decided it might be quite fun to make this a diverse book. Specifically I'm going to be aiming to read a book from an author of colour for this card but it could be more loosely interpreted as a book that features diversity re representation of people that are not like myself. For Colonel Mustard because he looks old and grumpy. <laughs> we decided to make this, I'd have to pick one of the oldest books on my TBR using a random number generator. The Reverend Green, because of his job, <laughs> is going to be a Christian book. So I read quite a lot of Christian non-fiction but I also have a little stash of Christian fiction that I don't get to very often so I think I'm probably going to use this tend to be for Christian fiction but it might also be for Christian non-fiction. Miss Scarlet is going to be a book that features a romance so it doesn't have to be specifically a romance book just any book that features a romance plot line. Professor Plum is going to be non-fiction books. I read quite a lot of non-fiction but this will be specifically non-fiction for him. And Mrs Peacock is a hat tip to my friend Penny who, who helped me come up with this idea. So for Mrs Peacock, Penny will pick a book for me from my TBR. I think how that's going to work, although we haven't definitely decided yet, is that I will send her a picture of a shelf from my TBR car and she will pick one of those books for me to read. And then the room cards are a little bit more general, so they're a bit of a kind of catch-all category. The kitchen is a short book, so a book with less than 250 pages. The 
Study is a book from an international author, so that is any author that is not from the UK or the United States, because that's the author nationalities I tend to read most often. The Hall is going to be a new release book, so that will be a book released this year. The Library is quite obviously a book that I'm gonna, it's gonna be a library book, <laughs> a book that I'm borrowing from the library. The Lounge is gonna be a mood read, so this is kind of a bit of a wild card that if I pick this then I don't have to pick a book today, uh, I can just use this for any book that I fancy reading that isn't on the list during the month. The Ballroom, this I think is my favourite one, is gonna be, I'm gonna shuffle my iTunes and the first song that plays I'm gonna have to try and pick a book that links to that song. The Dining Room is gonna be a book featuring food of some sort. The Billiard Room is gonna be a book over 500 pages. And then finally, The Conservatory is gonna be a memoir. So some of those are a bit more random, but some of them, there is, a, there is a clear link. Some of it was trying to find categories that I know would fit in. Yeah, so each month I will pick five cards at random from the deck and I will have to read a book based on those prompts. If I pick three of the same type of card within the month then I'll have to pick an extra card so that will be a sixth book. And then because it's fun to have a kind of forfeit element to this we're also going to be picking a murder card each month and if I don't read all the books that I pick for the TBR in the month then that adds an extra one. Whatever is in this envelope I have to read that book in the next month's game, if that makes sense. It will make a bit more sense as we go through. But I think that's all the rules. If anything isn't clear, let me know and I will explain it again. Oh yeah, that was the other thing I forgot to say. Because I already have book club books and I have a couple of staples that are always already on my TBR. So some of those are referenced in some of the cards, but if I don't pick them as part of the cards, I will still aim to read them, but they won't count towards the forfeit. So for example, I generally always pick a read around the world book and I always pick an oldest from my TBR book. So if they come up as one of the prompts, I don't have to read an extra one unless I want to. And if they don't come up as one of the prompts, I will try and read them as well still in the month, but they won't count towards a forfeit if I don't read them, if that makes sense. Yeah, and the same with the book club books, I'll be aiming to read them as well, but if I can fit them into one of the prompts, I will to take the pressure off myself a little bit. Like, this is meant to be fun. I'm trying to keep it quite open and quite light because I don't want to put too much pressure on myself, particularly with, like, I'm moving in a month and I'm starting a new course and it's going to be a little bit, like, it's going to be a bit stressful trying to find my feet with all the change, life changes going on. So this is meant to be a fun distraction and not something that's going to put pressure on me. So onto the books that I've picked for this month. As I said, I have already pre-picked them just because I wanted to get a flavour for how it would work. But every other month from now on I will be picking them on camera so you, you will see them as I go along. So the first card I drew today was the Spanner card which is a sci-fi book. So the book I'm going to be reading for that is Provenance by Anne Leckie which is a book I've had out from the library since the beginning of lockdown and I haven't managed to get around to it yet but Anne Leckie is an author I love so I'm really excited to be picking this up this month. The next card I drew was Colonel Mustard so this is for the oldest on my TBR so I'm going to use a random number generator to pick that book so I'm gonna do that now. There are 26 books on that list but a couple of them I've already read and a couple of them I've already unhauled so I'm just gonna type in oops can you see that there 1 to 26 that's gonna generate for me. Let's come up with number 20. I don't think that showed up very well so if I look on the list I bet it's gonna be one I've already done. Yeah I've already read that book so I'm gonna generate another one and it has come up with number four. Okay so then the book that's number four on the list is the second in a series, but the book that's number three on the list is the first one in that series, so I'll read that one, I'm just gonna go and get it. Okay, so the book that actually was generated was the book that's number four on the list, which is The Black Unicorn by Terry Brooks, but this is actually a sequel, it's the second book in the Landover, Magic Kingdom of Landover series, and I have it in the first one, the first one is also on that list though. To make this actually work, <laughs> I'm gonna read the first one, which is Magic Kingdom for Sale by Terry Brooks, so this is the first book in the Magic Kingdom of Landover series. If I get through this and the other ones, then I will try and pick up The Black Unicorn as well, but I don't generally read series back to back, so I might not do that, but I will try my best to read both of them but if I only read this but only this one will count for 
for the prompt. <laughs> Can you tell I'm slightly still making this up as I go along? So the next card that I drew was The Billiard Room, which is a book that's over 500 pages. So for that, I'm going to be reading The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. I'm buddy reading this with the same people that I read City of Brass with last month. Really excited to carry on the buddy read of that one. We're starting that one next week. The next card I drew was Conservatory, which is a memoir. And for that, I'm going to be reading Becoming by Michelle Obama. I have this out from the library. Someone else has reserved it, so I need to try and get to it soon. So I'm actually gonna try and start this one tomorrow. And this will be the, probably the first book that I read because it's due back fairly soon. And then the final card I picked was Mrs. White, which is a diverse book. And for this, I'm gonna be reading Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, which is actually our Space Sirens book club pick for July and I haven't got round to it yet. So I, I'm going to be reading this again. I'm going to try and read this this week in time for the live show next week. Can't actually make it to the live show this time around because I double booked myself, but I'm still going to be trying to read this anyway. Okay, so that is all the books for the prompts. The classics book club that I'm a part of, I'm not actually taking part this month because the book they picked was The Picture of Dorian Gray, which I've read and I didn't enjoy, so I don't want to reread it. Editing Kerry here apologies for the lighting I just forgot to add that our Space Sirens book club book pick for August is The House in the Cerulean Sea I've ordered my copy that hasn't arrived yet so I'll be trying to read that in August as well and I'm also doing another buddy read for Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett with some other booktubers so I am starting this one this week as well and then for my read around the world I've got another library book that I'm gonna read so this is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah so this is his memoir about growing up mixed race in apartheid South Africa and how that affected him and his life really looking forward to reading that one too that gives me a total of seven books I average about eight or nine books per month but I have got several books that I'm still haven't quite finished yet from last month so that's quite achievable. My priority will obviously be trying to get through my prompt ones, but if I don't, I'm now gonna pick the murder card, which will go in this envelope, and if I don't manage to read the five books for my five prompts, then it will be an extra book to read next month. Okay, so I'm going to take the first card here. I'm not gonna look at it. You can see what that card is, and I'm gonna put it in the envelope there without looking at it. So those are my books, my first ever Cluedo TBR game. Not quite sure what I'm gonna call it yet. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Let me know if you're gonna watch our live show for the Space Aryans Book Club on Saturday next week. Hopefully this will be up by then, it should be. And I will link our book club channel in the description box as well so you can go and find that. Also in the description box are links to my social media so I'm on Instagram and Twitter and on Goodread. Also if you haven't yet check out my Ninja Book Box unboxing video which I've just posted because there's a giveaway that's ongoing for that so go and have a look at that. Yeah so that's it for today so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.